Astronomy is the study of the universe and everything in it. From the smallest dust particle to the largest black hole. From the beginning of the universe nearly 14 billion years ago up to the present day. And for over 5,000 years, astronomers have been studying the objects in the night sky and trying to understand our place in the universe. And today, thousands of astronomers are still continuing this task. When people think of astronomers at work, they imagine them looking something like this, or this, or maybe even this. They see someone staring at the sky through a telescope all night long. Because how could you study the universe without looking through a telescope? But the reality of what astronomers do at work is far more interesting than just staring at the sky. How do I know? Because I am an astronomer. My name is Matthew Allen and I'm a PhD student at Cardiff University studying astronomy. Over the last three years I've met lots of different people and they all think I spend most of my time staring straight up at the sky with a telescope, longingly gazing at the heavens above. But the reality of being an astronomer is really different. And so today I'm going to show you what an astronomer really does. I'm going to show you a day in the life of an astronomer. So it's 9am and it's the start of work. And the first job of today is to read any new scientific papers that have been released. Now around 50 astronomy papers are released every single day and they look something like this. And in them scientists describe their latest research and results for other scientists to read and to understand. Now thankfully only one or two papers in my field are released every single day, but they still take a while to read. So you'll have to excuse me while I go off and read a couple of papers. So all the papers have been read for today and now it's time to do some work. So I'm an observational astronomer and what that means is I look at images of the night sky and the objects in them and try to understand them. So this is the point where I start using a telescope, right? Well actually no. The first thing you might notice is it's pretty light outside. It's not very good conditions for looking at stars. And secondly, I live in the middle of Cardiff. There's no telescopes anywhere near here. You see, there are two types of telescopes. There are telescopes that are down here on the ground, like the James Clark Maxwell Telescope in Hawaii, or the Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico. Because they cost so much money, there aren't many of them in the world, and certainly not enough for everyone to use them all the time. So instead, astronomers might use these telescopes for only a few nights every year. They might even control them from their desk, or have someone at the telescope control it for them. Then there are space telescopes, like the Hubble Space Telescope or the Herschel Space Observatory. These are operated by big space agencies, like the European Space Agency or NASA, who share all the images they take with many scientists around the world. This is how most of the images that astrophysicists use are collected. And all this means professional astronomers rarely get to use telescopes. And even when we do, they're normally controlled by computers. So we're looking at a computer screen rather than looking through the eyepiece of a telescope as Galileo did 400 years ago. The idea of professional astronomers spending their days and nights gazing up at the night sky through a telescope are very far from reality. So when we get our hands on these beautiful images of the night sky, what do we do with them? Well, it might surprise you to learn that the majority of a professional astronomer's day is spent writing and running computer code. Decades ago, astronomers would have got images of galaxies and stars and printed on them on plastic or paper, and they would have analysed these pictures. But nowadays, we can look at the same images on a computer screen instead. We can study the size of galaxies, the temperatures of stars, and a whole host of other things using computer programs which we write and run ourselves. Computing has been as big an advance in the history of astronomy as the invention of the telescope. Where once astronomers had to look at and analyse printed photographs of the night sky for days, weeks or months, computers can now do the same work in minutes or hours. Take this image for example. This is an image taken by the Hubble Space Telescope and is known as the Hubble Deep Field. It contains around 3,000 galaxies, giant collections of billions of stars, just like our own Milky Way. Now imagine having to individually identify, count, measure each of these galaxies. Well, that's what astronomers would have had to do around 60 years ago. But today we use computers, which are able to identify and measure each galaxy in this image in just a matter of minutes. 
Computing has allowed astronomers to spend more of their time studying the universe rather than counting bright spots on photographs. So many astronomers study images of the night sky using computer programs. But what you might not know is many astronomers, rather than looking at stars and galaxies in images, create their own stars and galaxies. This here is a simulation of stars forming. The simulation shows two large clouds of gas colliding with each other. At the point where they meet, the density of gas increases, which is enough to begin the process of forming stars. The black dots that appear at the end of the simulation are the stars that are created. Now this simulation takes many hours to run on a very good computer, but it allows us to see millions of years of time in just a few seconds, something that we can't see in real life. It also allows us to create whatever scenario we like, how fast the gas clouds are moving, how big they are. Computer simulations like this allow us to create our own universe. So some astronomers study the images of the night sky using computer programs, while others create images of what the universe might look like through computer simulations. So the majority of a professional astronomer's time isn't spent looking through a telescope, but it's actually running and writing computer programs. I bet you didn't know that. And on that note, I better get off and do some work. So one way in which astronomers get to meet other astronomers and also learn about new research is through seminars. Once a week, an astronomer from another university or institute comes in and gives a talk about their work for around one hour. Now this is a really good way of also meeting other researchers at different universities. Now I've still got a little bit of time left today to do some work. The last thing I have to do today is to write some papers. Now, part of being a scientist is you have to write lots of papers. And this is to tell people about your research and any results you've found to the rest of the scientific community. Now, most scientists publish one or two papers every year, which might not seem like a lot, but actually from the conception to publish, Papers can take around one year, so actually there's quite a lot of work involved. And on that note, I better get off and do some writing. So hopefully I've shown you what the typical week of a professional astronomer is like. There's still lots of other things we have to do. We have to have research meetings with our group. We often have to teach undergraduates physics. We also do a lot of outreach. This is going to schools, public events, making cool videos like this to get people really enthusiastic about science. And then the whole week finishes off with a trip to the pub on a Friday evening. The life of an astronomer is far from spending our days and nights looking into a telescope. I can't think of anything more boring. Instead, we get to write computer programs that can simulate the births and lives of stars, meet amazing scientists from around the globe who come and talk about the most cutting edge astronomy research. And every once in a while, we do get to just around the world to use some of the most incredible telescopes ever built. And on that note, it's time for me to go home. But I'll be back tomorrow to do more astronomy. Hopefully I've shown you what a day in the life of a professional astronomer is like. And we don't spend most of our days just looking through telescopes. <laughs>